And so Sean's like, under no circumstances, you're promising the American people that you will never, ever, ever be an authoritarian dictator. And Trump's like, mm, except on day one. <laughs> Donald Trump stirred controversy, which isn't atypical for him. This time it is around embracing the term dictator. Now, in our current political climate, uh, dictator, Nazi, fascist, these just are kind of words that are used and overused so often. Uh, they become vapid. They have very little meaning. Nobody even takes it that seriously. Uh, the left calls the right authoritarian fascist dictators because of their stances about taking some critical theories out of education and some of their views on LGBTQ issues and and the the right calls the left fascist for trying to push big government and going all the way back to the covid lockdowns and the everyone has to get the jab and that's fascist authoritarian so everybody's a dictator everybody's a fascist everybody's authoritarian and this has probably not been ascribed to anyone as much as it's been ascribed to trump and trump has earned that in some ways, not through his actual actions or policies, but just through his rhetoric. And Trump's uh, Trump's kind of filter for what he's willing to say seems to be whatever comes to my mind. Wow. So that's not a great way to live, and it's definitely not a great way to lead. It has been effective for him in a political climate where both sides are looking for representation to help them give the biggest middle finger to the other side possible. And so there's no better troll, there's no better middle finger, there's no better crazy uncle who will say all the things you're not supposed to say than Donald Trump, which is why he is absolutely trumping everyone wow. Wow. wow terrible dad joke uh in the polls right now i mean he is clearing away the front runner all of the other republican debates are just kind of everyone trying out for the jv squad trump is the lone member on the varsity team and everyone else is in a, a very 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 distant second place and so it's working for him but i want to remind you from a christian perspective uh, that just because something's effective doesn't mean it's correct just because something's effective doesn't mean it's ethical. Just because something's effective doesn't mean that it's moral or or that God would um, necessarily look with pleasure on it. So uh, that would be a utilitarian approach to life, which says something like, if it is effective, then it is good. So you take God out of the equation. You don't have any transcendent standard for moral or ethics. You're left with something like utilitarianism. So whatever is is good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh, all of the means uh, all will ultimately be justified by the ends that you accomplish. That's not a Christian perspective. I do understand it is a common political perspective. And so Trump, because he, he is verbose and he's willing to say just about anything, um, he is called a dictator more than probably anyone else in human history. And now, in what seems like the ultimate troll, he is embracing that moniker. Here's him in an interview with Sean Hannity. And I want you to notice, Sean isn't interviewing him as much as he is uh, guiding him to try to say the right thing. And Sean Hannity is going to desperately, desperately try to get Trump to say the right thing here. And guess what? It's not going to work. All right, let's check it out. Under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. So, so this was not a question. <laughs> this was Sean saying, under no circumstances, Donald Trump, you are going to do this. Please work with me here, man. For the love of God, just say this thing that's so obvious. I need you to say it. This is not a question. This is a command. So just say what I need you to say. I'm, I'm going to start it again. Sean just begging him to do the right thing. Under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight you would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. He does what he wants. Here's, here's his filter. So he gets that non-question question, and then his mind is like, say something stupid. Here we go. He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border, and I want to drill, that's drill, not a, that's, drill. That's not, oh, no. that's not retribution. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, you know, he keeps, he says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. Okay, so you will never hear Trump the same way after I tell you this. I heard a comedian one time describe Donald Trump's entire speech strategy as say something and then tell you that he just said something. And so Sean's like, under no circumstances, you're promising the American people that you will never, ever, ever be an authoritarian dictator. And Trump's like, mm, except on day one. And then he just tells us what happened. This guy, he said not to say this, and then I totally said it, big time. 
So what is this? Because as you can probably imagine, from this moment forward, in right, right up to present day, the 24-7 news cycles have just been spinning. Trump promises to be a dictator. Trump is going to be a dictator on day one. Since this, Trump in a speech somewhere, he's, he's never not giving speeches. He gives 17 speeches a day. He doubled down on this. He told this, this whole story and said, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to be a dictator on day one. Um, and so everyone's saying Trump is promising to be a dictator. If, if Trump gets elected, democracy is over. If Trump gets elected, then the whole American experiment is out the window. We had a good run from 1776 to 2024, but if Trump gets back in the White House, then it's all over. <laughs> we have to have a, a little bit more faith in the robustness of our country. Now, are things trending in directions that could absolutely signal the eventual collapse of an empire. Sure, I mean, anybody who has studied history at any level can, can tell you that. Um, empires don't last forever and they get certain levels of decadence and they start living outside the realms of reality and then things go poorly. But if if Biden is the president, the democracy is not over. If Trump's the president, the democracy is not over. Neither of them are dictators. Neither of them are fascist. Both of them have different levels of authoritarianism on different things. So what does he actually say? And so let's talk just pragmatically about if he's actually claiming that he's going to be a dictator on day one. And then let's look at the underlying of like, is this a good idea? And why are we using this kind of rhetoric? And is it helpful? And what is it rooted in? So is he actually claiming that he's going to be a dictator right on day one? What he said is, yeah, except on day one, because uh, I'm going to build the wall, it's going to be huge, and we're going to drill, drill, drill. In other words, I'm going to sign executive orders and we're going to get the wall back going and we're going to get drilling going again. That, that's what he said. And so he's he's defining being a dictator on day one as getting the wall construction going on the border and drilling, drilling, drilling. Now, if you don't know this, when presidents come into office um, and this is this is a little bit of a modern phenomena, the power of executive orders has exploded in the modern era. The way our government is supposed to work, if you watch Schoolhouse Rock and there's a bill up on Capitol Hill, is the legislator, our representatives in Congress and the Senate, um, they represent us and they pass the laws. However, because of some of the, the you know, way you can read into the Constitution, the executive does have powers and the president is the chief executive of the nation. And increasingly they've been using those executive powers to make executive orders which bypasses congress and just puts well, for all intents and purposes new legislation out into the world uh barack obama was famous for saying something like with a telephone and a pen he can run the country you know so that that's not an exact quote but it's pretty close and so i just want to look just pragmatically if you are someone who is just really concerned because trump out of his own mouth said i'm gonna be a dictator on day one um for comparison, I want us to look, this is not some far crazy conspiratorial website. This is whitehouse.gov. And on whitehouse.gov, this is fact sheet. President-elect Biden's day one executive actions deliver relief for families across America amid converging crisis. So day one executive orders. So this is this is what Trump said on day one. On day one, I'm gonna be a dictator. I don't, I don't have a good Trump. Uh, on day one, I'm going to be a dictator. I'm going to build the wall and I'm going to drill. So just the scope of this, uh, number one shows there were a lot of executive orders on day one. Trump did this as well. And Barack Obama did this uh, as well. And Bush did this. Everyone comes in on day one in order to fulfill a bunch of campaign promises. They make executive orders. Everybody does this. Extend the student loan pause, rejoin the Paris Agreement on Climate. So this category right here, tackling climate change, creating good union jobs and advancing environmental justice, this section right here undid a lot of the regulation slashing and energy, uh, you know, boosting that Trump tried to do during his presidency. So when he says, I want to drill, 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 what he's saying is, I want to undo the executive orders the last guy did dictatorially on day one. It goes down, launch a, a whole of government initiative to advance racial equity. Um, it continues. Reverse President Trump's executive order excluding undocumented immigrants from re, uh, re 
apportionment count, preserve and fortify protections for dreamers, reverse the Muslim ban, repeal of Trump inferior, uh, interior enforcement executive order, and here we go. Stop border wall construction. So the two things that Trump wants to do as a day one dictator, I'm gonna be a day one dictator, it's gonna be huge, that's the best Trump, that's the best Trump I got. Wow. Is two things that on day one of Joe Biden's presidency, um, he undid. And so yeah, if Trump is back, it's gonna be so crazy. We've only ever had this one other time. Uh, I, was it Grover Cleveland who was like president and then not president, president or Garfield, one of those guys. Um, where it's like, he's president and then he's not president and he's president. So it's like, he passes a bunch of stuff. And then on day one, Joe Biden undoes a bunch of stuff and he gets back in on day one, he redoes a bunch of stuff. And and it's, it's knocks off the equilibrium of the country for one thing, uh, if we care about that. Um, but this is the power that the chief executive now holds. And so all that to say, when he says, Sean is like, please, please, I'm, I'm on my knees begging you, Trump, just say, I'm not gonna be a dictator. And Trump is like, stop the cap. I am, for sure. And he's trolling because what he says is, I'm gonna sign executive orders, I'm gonna build a wall and I'm gonna drill, drill, drill. It's gonna be huge. And all he's really saying is I'm gonna do what every president does now. I'm, I'm gonna get a pen and I'm gonna get some documents and I'm gonna sign a whole bunch of executive orders. And it's not really how the government is supposed to run, but everybody does it. And so I'm gonna get things back on track. Now, is it wise? Is it wise to talk like this? And is it uh, moral to use your words in this way to intentionally stir up controversy? Now, if you're gonna make a utilitarian argument, sure. I mean, everyone's talking about him and it, it, it gins up controversy and no, no news is bad news. And he is exceeding and, and just thriving in the polls, in the primary, and increasingly in nationwide polls, he does have an edge on Joe Biden to, to become the next president, to retake his spot. And so if you're Trump or you're just all in on Trump, then you can make a utilitarian argument and I'm not even gonna argue against it because maybe this is exactly what he should say if the end always justifies the means. And maybe you're at a place where you think the country is so far off track that you you really are there to go whatever it takes to get him back in. The end, the end will justify the means. And maybe that's where you're at. What we do here on the podcast is we try to look at things from the ancient wisdom of scripture. And as believers in Jesus, we don't compromise the scripture, um, even if it would lead to an end that we are naturally for. So Proverbs 15, one says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And this is, this is not saying that it's pro harsh words stirring up anger because you'll spend more time in the news cycle and your poll numbers might bump. That's not what Proverbs is saying. It is saying a harsh word stirs up anger and anger is not good. You shouldn't be doing that. Proverbs 21, 23 says, those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. And it is a little bit of a risk, maybe a lot of bit of a risk to go in and start claiming the moniker of dictator because in a real sense, what Trump is doing is in his mind, he's trolling and to his base, he's trolling. And, and they, you know, everyone's gonna really like that. But to the other side, you're affirming a bias they already have about you. And this could result in calamity because this, this presidential election, assuming it's between Joe Biden, who seems to be in bad health and Donald Trump who might be in, in prison, Again, side note, how did we get here? How can we not find better candidates? But let, let's assume it's between those two guys. It's going to come down to the undecided voters. It's gonna come down to the independents. They are going to decide. And if the difference between them voting for you and not voting for you is that someone can take you out of context where you say, I am gonna be a dictator, even if it's a one day dictator, you could lose enough of a percentage of independence because you wanna troll and you wanna rile up your base. It could end up costing you. It could create calamity for you. And my hope is that in my lifetime, and man, this is an audacious hope, so here we go. My hope is that we can get back to a political environment where we are not so at odds and so entrenched that we have to result to trolling and extreme rhetoric where everyone has to be a, a racist, fascist, Nazi, dictator, authoritarian, where, where we can just have honest conversations about our differences of opinions and work together to make the best country possible. 
you enjoyed this clip, make sure you check out the full podcast and subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all new content. You can also support the channel at patreon.com slash Clayton Tyner. Link is in the description below.